Live from New York, it's The Cube, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE. We're here, this is day three at Big Data New York City, Big Data NYC as part of Strata and Hadoop World. Uh, this is theCUBE's sixth year covering Hadoop World. Yuan Ho is here. He's the co-founder and CTO of Transwarp Technology out of China. Great to see you in the US. We were talking off, off camera about what you guys do. Very interesting company doing massive scale work in big data within China, entering the US market. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you, uh, and it's also very good to see you. Yeah. yeah, so tell us a little bit more about uh, Transwarp. Not many people in our audience have not heard of you. You're doing some really great work in, in China. Talk more about that. Okay, so uh, Transwarp is a big data startup company in China. So we founded Transwarp uh, two years ago, and uh, Transwarp is growing very fast. Uh, from uh, the early uh, 10 uh, engineers to today a few hundreds of uh, engineers. And uh, we are actually the leading uh, Hadoop digital vendor in China. So we have uh, uh, quite a lot of customers. Uh, they are deploying our clusters uh, and they're storing a lot of data on our platform. Just since your, um, and not as, your name recognition is, isn't yet as great uh, in the US, one of the things that, that might surprise people is the scale at which your customers are operating. Perhaps you can tell us a little more about that. Okay, yes. So actually the number one sector uh, uh, to deploy our uh, product is uh, in telco. So one of uh, telco company like uh, China Unicom, they have a very large cluster uh, and they are collecting all the core data records uh, for, from their customers. And the cluster is uh, storing about 20 petabytes of the records. So it's, uh, uh, because you know in China there is a lot of uh, people. The, there are more population than in US, so the, <laughs> the data is still, uh, yeah. is also larger. And Can what you, are uh, folks uh, doing? Uh, what are your customers doing with, uh, with the technology? Is it, is, it, is it churn analysis? Is it sort of sales and marketing? Is it, is it infrastructure assessment? Can you talk about that? Yeah, there are several uh, typical use cases. The first one is uh, data warehouse, actually. Hmm. Uh, so um, uh, we uh, already acquired uh, quite a lot of um, um, uh, customers in, in financial services. So they are using our product to do uh, traditional data warehouse uh, workload just like uh, they move, move their data from their uh, systems, core banking systems to Hadoop and uh, do a lot of like, risk, analysis, risk analysis uh, and uh, some uh, batch processing to clean the data. So, uh, you know, yeah, because we provide the most complete SQL support so that they are able to migrate their existing applications to our platform very easily. Uh, so that's very typical use case uh, because they, um, the data volume is increasing very quickly, and uh, their existing uh, uh, regional database cannot handle so much data. So they need a new infrastructure, but uh, the application is still uh, the older one. So they need to migrate their existing applications to a new architecture. So th that's the first requirement I think uh, we saw in China. Um, so in telco companies, there are still the major one uh, problems for them, because you know, there are a lot of data, like several petabytes of data. They need to do massive uh, processing, uh, like uh, to do some statistics, uh, to, uh, to evaluate some uh, KPI or matrix, and to find, uh, uh, so uh, to actually create a tag for every customer, and to define their uh, like, um, uh, data uh, plan for their customers. So, uh, so this is the uh, batch processing use case. And the, the, the second uh, typical use case is actually arising uh, in the uh, uh, Internet of Things. So there are a lot of sensors in China, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, like in public transmitting systems, uh, many cities, they have deployed a lot of uh, sensors on the road. Uh, so they uh, actually collect a, a massive amount of data. Uh, they need to do this data uh, to do the processing uh, in real time. Okay, and 
you, the, your number one distro vendor in China, a Hadoop distro vendor, and, and can you describe your distribution a little bit? You know, to here we're, we're used to Hortonworks, Cloudera, and, and MapR, and we kind of understand, you know, Hortonworks is pure Apache, Cloudera's kind of in between, MapR does, it's more, you know, builds its own IP. Where do you fit in that spectrum? Yeah, actually we have two product lines. The first product we call it Transform Data Hub. Uh, so that is basically a Hadoop distro. Uh, we have uh, uh, we also patch uh, the Hadoop the Hadoop core uh, for our customers, and we actually build uh, four sub products on top of Hadoop. Mm -hmm. The first is uh, SQL engine on top of Hadoop. We call it uh, Inceptor. So that SQL engine uh, provides uh, uh, complete support for SQL 2003 standard, and we also provide support for PL SQL. So that's the Oracle's extension to SQL. Uh -huh. And uh, we are like about 98% uh, compatible with Oracle's syntax. What's your SQL engine called again? Uh, Inceptor. Inceptor, okay. So uh, that engine is uh, able to support global transactions on top of Hadoop. That means you can maintain the data consistency. So in case of failures. Uh, so this is a very critical feature for uh, financial services. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first product on top of Hadoop. Uh, we have uh, the other three, uh, and the second successful product is uh, our stream product. So that is a streaming framework on top of Hadoop. Uh, we are able to do complete SQL on uh, the streaming data. We are able to run machine learning algorithms on top of streaming data. So that means you can uh, uh, do the processing when the uh, data flows in. So we call it a stream, transform a stream. Uh, so this part is also very successful. We deployed in uh, like uh, more than, uh, I think it's already more than 50 cities. Uh, they are deployed our stream product. Can you tell us, I, I know that there's two more products to go, but well, one, just to clarify on the SQL product, um, understand that it includes uh, PL SQL, so it's easy for customers perhaps to migrate some of their Oracle workloads. But did I understand you correctly to say that this is not just for decision support, but transaction processing as well? Uh, not for transaction processing, but uh, even in data warehouse, you need to modify the data, right? So you have ah. to insert, update, uh, okay. or modify. Then you have to maintain the transactions, otherwise the data will be inconsistent right. in case of failures. Okay, so let me then jump, jump ahead just to the streaming product and, and the machine learning it can perform. Can you tell us a little more about the, all the sensors in some of these cities and when you're learning about the data as it's coming in, what might what could you do with it? So, uh, like for example, uh, uh, so first you need to transform the data into uh, a, a, a new form, like a, a FFT transformation. So, uh, to Fast, for, from for time for to frequency. Oh, from time. Uh, so, and then uh, uh, you have to run some statistics over the streaming data, like you can do SQL processing uh, over the streaming data, so that you can collect some metrics. And these metrics are fed into a machine learning -like algorithm to detect some, uh, uh, maybe some risks or mere function of their devices. So uh, basically you can do some, like from uh, statistics to machine learning, all this can be done on the streaming uh, framework. So the, the latency is very low, it's less than uh, like a 300 milliseconds. This is already, I mean, Spark streaming really gets sort of stuck when you try and get below 400 milliseconds. And the, they don't yet have deep integration between SQL and streaming and machine learning. So it sounds like you have a rather sophisticated product here at this, you know, uh, that sounds like it's uh, uh, ahead of some of the other products that are very well known here. Uh, right, actually we write the uh, streaming uh, framework. So this is a, a different framework from uh, Spark streaming. Unders understood. Yeah, because we need to uh, support like PL SQL on top of streams. But then what are, wh what are some of the th capabilities, what are the, some of the, th the activities that you do once you've learned from this incoming data? Uh, let me give some examples. Yes. Like, uh, the first example actually arises from uh, the um, energy uh, segment. So uh, they, actually there are a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, power companies, they use wind to generate power. And, uh, and also they, there are some solar power companies. Uh, 
there are already lots of sensors in the uh, uh, devices, like uh, in one wind generator, uh, there is uh, at most uh, 1,000 sensors in one single generator. So uh, they need to detect uh, any uh, malfunction of their uh, generator uh, so that they can alert their uh, staff earlier. Um, so uh, we collect all this data from sensors. So in one example, uh, they actually have um, 10 million sensors collecting from all their uh, generators every second. Wow. Yeah, so uh, they have to process this data <laughs> Within every second to detect uh, some uh, um, like uh, mail function or some to get some alerts before it breaks. Yeah, before it breaks. You know, and I want I want to ask you uh, about your business model. You mentioned okay. a number of products, and if I understood it correctly, you you, you sell those products uh, right. on top of, of basically uh, Hadoop Core. Is that is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, we adopt a similar. Um, this model uh, like Cloud Era. Yeah. So we have an uh, open Hadoop core. So for some customers, we just uh, open source this Hadoop core to these customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we sell our products, proprietary products, uh, like in Scepter Stream. We also have two other sub products on top of Hadoop. So these are closed sourced. And then we, uh, uh, so for business model, model, we also adopt subscription model too for Hadoop, so private services to Hadoop. And uh, uh, for the components on top of Hadoop, usually customer will buy our product uh, as a um, uh, um, proprietary license. Okay, so you're like Cloudera in that sense, but also similar to Hortonworks in the subscription model for support. Is that correct? Am I understanding that right? Yes, for Hadoop Core, yeah. we provide uh, similar uh, subscription services. But for the products on top of Hadoop, they just buy our product like Oracle or some other database. So you have the best of both worlds. <laughs> okay, and, and then you started the company, you said three years ago, were your co-founder? Two, two years ago. Two years ago. Yes. Wow, and you're already up to, you said several hundred engineers. Right. That's impressive. Wow. Now, so yeah. tell, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about the, uh, the entrepreneurial climate, the startup climate in China. Um, mm. uh, talk about you know, why you started the company, how it went about, how you get funding, maybe give us some insight to that. Okay, so actually we found uh, the demand in China is uh, slightly different from the U.S. So they have, actually, they have more data. And uh, they, so Chinese customers are more practical. Uh, so they need to solve their problems instead of adopting to the new architecture, new product, new technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we found, that's why we found we need to build a SQL layer on top of Hadoop. And uh, this SQL layer must be very complete so that they can uh, just use our product as a database. So, uh, so this is the major reason we found the gaps between Hadoop and applications. Mm. Uh, that's why we, we found uh, we need to start a new company to fill the gaps. And in China, I think a lot of uh, VC and the PE, so they are looking for good company, good startups. Uh, and actually, they are very eager to fund uh, uh, those companies. And the, uh, the investment environment has changed a lot, I think. Uh, you know, uh, the chairman of China, the, uh, like she, uh, is uh, uh, encouraging young people to start up companies. And uh, actually, the government, uh, like uh, Shanghai, Beijing, uh, Guangzhou, uh, and Shenzhen, they are uh, actually um, uh, helping those uh, startup companies to grow quickly. So there is, I think, there is a very good climate for startup companies in China today. Mm. Excellent, and. and um and so you have outside investors, yes? Is that right? Or yes. So we already finished uh, uh, Angel A and A plus round of uh, uh -huh. funding, and we are uh, doing um, uh, Series B funding. And and are your competitors <coughs> U.S. based distribution companies, or do you have you know local uh, chi Chinese company competitors? And um, I think uh, most of them are Chinese uh, local com competitors. So they are using uh, open source Hadoop to uh -huh. compete against us. I see. Okay, but you were first, is that right, or? or yeah, we are the first. And also, okay. we, we found, uh, like Carrera has its office in China too, and, uh, uh, but uh, they are not the major player in China market. Uh -huh. And what about uh, aspirations in the U.S. market? Uh, you've, you've launched a, a division to, to in the U.S., headquarters in the U.S. What, what are your aspirations here? Mm. 
Yes, we are actually finding some um, uh, looking for partners in US. Uh, we hope to um, actually like apply our uh, experiences or applications, uh, some knowledge in China and uh, to uh, US, so that uh, uh, we, we do find some different use cases, like uh, uh, like traditional data warehouse workloads. Uh, we are capable to do this. Uh, I think we are more capable than other hard uh, in the U.S. market. It, it sounds like, uh, whereas others might be able to do, other competitors in China might be able to do core Hadoop distributions from the open source, um, just pulling it down from a, a GitHub, you know, an Apache product. But you've put these value add layers on because it sounds like Chinese customers are more pragmatic Whereas here, customers might buy it because they're like, their CIO says, what are we doing in big data? Mm -hmm. it sounds like in China, they'll buy it if it says, you know, what problem are we solving? Maybe, are you looking to sell those four, you know, value add products on top of um, Hadoop Core? Yes, yes, I think um, if these four uh, products on top of Hadoop, I think uh, we are very uh, competitive. Uh, in, in comparison to other uh, Hadoop uh, vendors. So uh, I think we are, we hope to sell these products uh, in US. So these are very um, capable to fill, to fill the gaps between applications and uh, Hadoop core. So what are your thoughts on what you've seen this week at uh, Strata and Hadoop World and Big Data New York City? Um, any impressions that you can share with us? And what have you I learned? Yes, and then, uh, this year's Strata conference is, uh, I think it's uh, much larger than uh, last year's. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of startup companies coming up, uh, so even more than last year. I think in last year we, we found uh, about 100 companies, and then this year there are much more than 100 companies that sponsor this conference. Mm. Uh, and we also found a new, or some new uh, technologies coming out, like Kares uh, Kudu, they are building a, a a new storage engine, uh, so complementing uh, HDFS and HPS. And we also found uh, Spark is still uh, growing very fast. Yeah, so uh, I wonder if I could get, because you're a technologist, you understand this stuff you know, pretty well. So you mentioned uh, complementing HBase and HDFS. Some people feel as though perhaps they're competing, if you will. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts as a technologist? It's particularly HDFS. I mean, maybe HBase, there's a different sort of use case, but what, what about that? Um, I think there are some critics about HDFS and HBase uh, in the past several years. Uh, they cannot do uh, the uh, 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 batch processing and the, uh, or some OLAP analysis on top of the real-time data. So uh, um, um, I think the, the new product from Kaira, the Kudo, is filling the gap. Mm. And uh, we actually have a similar product called the Holodesk. So uh, initially we designed this product as a catch layer at first. And then we, uh, we allow insertion and modification into the storage in real time. So that we, uh, this is also a column store so that people can do uh, OLAP query on top of the real time data. Too, because we found some real problems in China, mm. and uh, like the sensor data, we have to collect this data in real time and do the query, or the whole query on top of the real time data, very quickly. Uh, so uh, uh, I think this uh, the the potential of this uh, kind of story engine uh, may replace uh, HBase in the wrong run. Mm. So actually, there's. A, Another alternative approach that is to improve HBase to be able to do these uh, queries very quickly. So that that is uh, another approach. So these two approaches they, they probably may converge, uh, just like a Google Spanner and a Google F1. So I think uh, that storage engine is inspired from Google Spanner. Yeah, interesting. Google Spanner came out a couple of years ago and it was a very uh, yeah. interesting global, you know, consistent you know, right. database capability, which was. A lot of good science work going on. What about the cloud in mm. China? A lot of discussion here about, is it on premise, on premises, mm. or on, in the cloud? How prevalent is uh, a, a cloud for Hadoop 
workloads in China? Uh, it's still in the early stage. Mm -hmm. um, there are quite a lot uh, cloud providers in China. Uh, right. Yeah. We actually have another product line called uh, Transop Operating System. So it is a, a derived work of Google Kubernetes. You know Kubernetes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, we, uh, we build our uh, Transform Data Hub on top of Kubernetes mm. so that uh, we can run Hadoop, any components of Hadoop uh, very uh, uh, smoothly uh, on top of uh, uh, Kubernetes and the Dockers. So you can store Hadoop cluster in a few minutes. The whole cluster uh, installation is done in a few minutes uh, using uh, Docker and containers. Mm. Just a, a quick follow-up on that. When customers in China evaluate running in the cloud or running hybrid, what's, what, what are some of their um, reasons? Because here, I'm, I'm just wondering if it's different from the US. Yes, so, uh, so uh, technically we, we, we run our uh, uh, Hadoop product on top of some public cloud like Qin Cloud and we are going to launch services on your cloud later. Uh, so uh, some customers like uh, retail company, uh, they, they often do their analysis like every week or every month. They do not need to build a large cluster to process their data. Uh, so that is not a cost effective. Uh, so they prefer to use public cloud. The data size is usually less than uh, like uh, one terabyte or two terabytes. So they can upload their data onto public cloud and do the analysis. Uh, and then we found another company uh, called AT, uh, ATA company, they uh, do some uh, examination or test services for students. So every year they, they hold like a three to four uh, exam, exams every year. So uh, it's, it makes sense for them to uh, use uh, public cloud to do the analysis because they only need to do uh, the, the analysis uh, like every uh, Every year they only do this uh, three to four times. So okay. they don't need to bother to buy a cluster. Excellent. Huan, we have to leave it there. So thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great to meet you and uh, appreciate you sharing your experiences and your knowledge about the market in China and as well the technologies. Uh, so congratulations and look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you, Dan. Okay, John. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from NYC. Right back. Mm.